month, NASM is giving you free courses. That's right, free courses each month just for being part of the NASM family. Learn about everything ranging from nutrition to strength, weight loss to stress relief, and everything in between. Click the link in the bio for information and to claim your free course before they're gone. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Ren and Fit. I am Wendy Batts and here with my friend and colleague, Mr. Ken Miller. How are you? I am well, Wendy. How are you doing? I am just peachy. Another day in paradise. <laughs> well, today we have a fun topic to talk about and one that I find to be very important. Uh, basically, we're wanting to talk about how long is too long to be in the gym. And so, Ken, I know that you and I were talking about this and we came up with some tips to avoid the gym overkill. And it actually came about because of your cousin, right? Was it your actually, cousin? Actually, it, it was my niece. Your niece. And here, yes. here's, the back, here's, the, here's the background story. Um, we were having a, a family get together out in the park, um, you know, kids playing all this stuff. And, and my niece shows up late. I was like, what's going on? How come you're so late? She's like, I had to work out this morning. I'm like, you know, jokingly, I said, how long was the workout? You know, because it's here it is in the after. It's like two hours. And and then she proceeds to tell me about her workout. And and she goes to the gym four days a week, two hours a time. So I thought that's way too long. And for, part of that was that, you know, she had to dedicate 50 plus minutes of cardio plus weight training. And so, you know, that became a conversation in and of itself when it came to, okay, well, if that's what you're doing and you want to see these benefits and it's great for her, you know, good on her as far as wanting to be in better shape, look better, be stronger, um, everything that we, we all should aspire for through our workouts. But, you know, sometimes too long is just too long and you could be actually doing more harm than good. And that, Wendy was, that's the big surprise to her. It's like, you know, you go with the more is better type of thought process versus, you know, not just the law of diminishing returns, but it could actually work against you to work out for too long, you know? So that that's what the, the motivation for this topic. Yes. And I think that you, I mean, that is the most important thing is we do think more is better. And oftentimes in different situations, absolutely could be. However, at the gym, it's not. Plus, when we hear people's number one reason for not going into the gym is they don't have time. And so the thing is, is when we look at the physical activity guidelines, guys, when we're talking about children and adolescents, so anywhere from like ages six through 17, they should do approximately one hour of activity a day. That makes sense. You're active, you're young, you know, you've got stuff going on in school and, you know, you're looking at the differences of aerobic capacity, muscle strengthening, and of course, bone strengthening in your adolescence, super important. But as an adult, so when we get past that, so 18 and above, when you look at the actual guidelines themselves, we're looking at anywhere from 150 minutes, so two hours and 30 minutes to a maximum of about 300 minutes per week again, per week of moderate, moderate intensity. However, now we've got all these things like HIIT workouts and everything that are like vigorous and high intensity exercises. And not saying that those are bad, but if you look at the actual guidelines, they're saying anywhere from 75 minutes to 150 minutes max a week. So there's got to be some checks and balances here because to your point, we can overtrain, we can start actually, you know, um, not increasing our muscle mass, like we're hoping if we're not filling our, our fuel, mm -hmm. like our bodies with the right nutrition, that could also be detrimental. And so it's, it's one of those topics that I think we take for granted, but there's no need to, to schedule two hours. Right. And I think, you know, just kind of backtrack a little bit, you know, when we think about, you know, if you think Wendy back to all the people that, you know, that exercise and exercise regularly, and you compare that to the number of people that you know that just don't exercise. I think, <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of like the, the weight balance is like, you know, definitely one, it's tilted one way. Um, but I think a lot of that is because e people's conception of, of what it actually takes to, to be on a good exercise 
routine. I do need to work out 60, 90 minutes every day. I do. If I'm not doing this, this, you know, boot camp type of workout routine, I'm not working out. Or if I, unless I run 10 miles a day, I'm not working out. But, you know, one of the things that we, we need to look at is, okay, you may not need to work out as hard as you think or how often or as how how long that you need to right and that might open the door for some people to actually just just get a workout so you mentioned all those you know the stats and the minutes and and things like that but i think part of the reason why people don't work out you know because a lot of us can be perfectionists is that hey you know if i can't get my hour in today then i'm not going to get it in but those numbers that you mentioned are spread out over over the week, right? You don't have to do it all today, but if you did a little bit today, you did a little bit tomorrow and a little bit more the day after that, and you hit a certain intensity, then you can actually do it. So just to kind of look at the other side of the coin, I think a lot of people don't work out because they have a thought that I need to work out so much, but Wendy, these these times, um, you know, two hours, two and a half hours per week, you know, if you break that down into 30 minute sessions, you know, there you go. There's, there's your week. I mean, that could be anywhere from a walk outside to, you know, a five exercise circuit routine that you do three times and, and you're done. And, and I think that's why more people don't work out. And those that do work out probably to the topic of this podcast is just, you don't have to do that much two hour workout in one workout when we're only talking about getting benefits after two and a half over the whole week. Right. Yes. So I well, think those there's yeah, that. there's a huge balance there. And those of you guys that are joining us, we're actually talking about, you know, the time that you spend in the gym. And we want to really um, give you some tips so that therefore you can avoid the gym overkill, if you will. And so um, my name, Wendy Batts, I'm here with my co-host, uh, Ken Miller. And I, I think the scale and the balance is what's extremely important. Plus, when I ask people, what do you do for two hours or what do you even do for an hour and a half? It, it as a trainer sometimes is frightening because they're saying that they're going into the gym and they're actually doing a workout for that long. And to my experience, when I'm working with clients, I don't need to even have them to do anywhere from two to three rounds of a full body workout. So everything, not even just a split routine and really focusing on their movement patterns. I can get it done in 45 minutes or less because on the front end, I'll do some, some manual stuff or some stretching on the back end. I do the same thing. And so when I hear this and they're saying that they're doing that, my question to them is always, well, how many breaks are you taking in between? And let's focus more on, especially if you're a weight loss client going one after another, after another, trying to avoid the breaks unless obviously needed and focus on quality of what you're doing versus just quantity. Because if you're just spending two hours in the gym just to do something that I can knock out in 35 or 40 minutes, there's a big difference there, I think. And I think that's when people say they can't schedule that amount of time is because they feel, to your point, if they can't do it for 60 minutes to two hours, then it's not even worth going into the gym. Yeah. And even then, it's a, it's a diluted 60, <laughs> you know, 60 to 120 minutes. And, you know, granted... You have those people that, uh, you know, they like to chop it up and, you know, lean on the machine and, and talk to you and, and have a full on discussion and act like it's happy hour. Uh, but, uh, you know, social need aside, yeah, you know, looking at intensity because you've seen those people that are, you know, if you're if you're on your bike, let's just say, and you are you've got your magazine or whatever you're reading that day or your book and you're just kind of casually strolling along on that treadmill or, you know, just kind of moving your feet, just, just, you know, turn that, you know, how it goes when you, you turn the pedals just fast enough so that the screen doesn't turn off, you know, so there, you know, so intensity does have a lot to do with that. As you, as you mentioned, as far as getting the benefit of the workout and if you can, you know, double, you know, if it's you know, a low intensity, you double the rate, you double the in intensity or the level of, of resistance. Yeah, a lot of people that we we know and and people that we see at the gym, because, again, I consider myself a gym voyeur. Like I like to see how people are working out, what they're working out on. And just looking at intensity alone, as, as you talked about, um, you could be done in half, the, literally half the time, you know, because 
that's that's what it takes to challenge the body. And and with the those thirty minutes, four or five times a week, you could be done. And and it, to your point, Wendy, forty five minutes of a workout with you, I I would be toast. I've seen your workouts. <laughs> I would I would be done. You would keep coming back for more, Ken. I would that was three times a week at least. <laughs> Well, and, and I think the number one point that I want to make sure that I want to stress on this is what is the purpose of your workout? Right. And and because, again, if you're trying to build size or you want to gain muscle and you need to have specific breaks in between, then why not let's train specific body parts for 30 minutes? And then you can come back and we can do something completely different the next day or the next day or or really look at how many days can you truly commit and then do we need to sprinkle in cardio here and there? And if I, if you don't, like, I, I am not a cardio person. I'm not a huge fan. I don't have, quote, the time. So I try to do a lot of things throughout my mm -hmm. workout to keep my heart rate up. So therefore, I'm kind of doing two things at the same time, if you will. So that's where some creativity comes comes along. And so I think if you have a purpose and if you write it down and think about what you're trying to do, then it's just like when you go to the grocery store right? If you have a list, you go in and buy what's on the list. Right. If you go in and you have no list, you come home with so much junk food and things that you, you spent way more money than you needed to on things because you went hungry or that looked good at the time or you thought, well, maybe this would be good with that dinner when it, it really wasn't. And it's you're wasting money and you're wasting time. You want to think of your workouts being at the gym the same way. Write down what you want to accomplish and then either work with the trainer or put down the exercises that are going to help you hit those goals and then switch it up each time you go in. I think that's another really important part. Don't do the same thing every time. You're not going to get newer. <laughs> you're not going to change if you're doing the same thing every day, right? You know, I, I'm laughing because I just did a trip to uh, one of those warehouse um, <laughs> stores, and I buy the same stuff, right? I get the eggs. I get the spring mix. I get uh, the rotisserie chicken. I, <laughs> I do the same. You know why? Because I don't have a list, Wendy. I need to walk in there with a list of the things that I need because I know, you know, for sure I come home, it's like, oh, you got this and this and this and mm -hmm. this. I'm like, uh, yeah, I did the same thing. I've never compared my workouts to how I go food shopping, Wendy. So thank mm -hmm. you for, for bringing that because I am a creature of habit from that standpoint. And <laughs> it's like, well, I can't send my <laughs> husband to one of those places because half the time I'm like, nope, that's going back. Nope, that's going back. Nope, that's going back. And that's the same thing at the gym. Somebody's trying to, you know, get like buns of steel because they want to have their glutes looking, you know, awesome. And they're doing things that really isn't beneficial because they didn't foam roll correctly. They didn't stretch correctly right. and they don't have great range of motion. And then they're not doing the exercise correctly with the right tempos and the right rep ranges. And so, you know, really when you're looking at a program itself and you think, okay, can I get this done realistically in 30 minutes? We'll come in right. and just go straight, straight at it. Grab the foam roller, foam roll, two or three body parts, make it simple, two or three body parts. Once you feel like you've loosened up those areas. And again, that will, the, the places to foam roll would be depending on what you're going to work out or depending if you've had an assessment, what you know is tight or overactive, mm -hmm. stretch a couple muscle groups, holding it for 30 seconds. Okay. That should take what, eight minutes and then spend the, the rest of your time. So 22 minutes going from one exercise, slow and controlled into another, into another, into another, and you should be able to complete it in 30, 30 minutes or less. It's like a pizza, 30 minutes or less inside your house. Well, you know what? Go to the gym, you know, and if you know that you need a shower, you need to be somewhere, then plan that hour or however long it takes you to get ready. But just know that if you can only do two or three things in 30 minutes, you're probably talking too much. You're on your phone. You're not there for a reason. And what is your purpose? And, and I think if you go with the purpose, you have your list. And which is your right. program and, or even on your phone, put it on your phone, but only have that app up or your music playing. Don't be scrolling through emails. Don't read your emails at the gym. Y'all give yourself 30, 45 minutes to take a mental break from work and focus on you because no one's going to take care of you, but you. Yep. There's, yeah. There's my rant. Yeah. <laughs> Avoiding gym overkill. Avoiding gym overkill. That's what we're talking about today. Miss Wendy Batts and me, Ken Miller here. And that's, I mean, that that's, that's it. And I, and I tell you, talking to clients and, or just talking to somebody in the gym, it's, it, it's you time, 
right? This is this is time for you. You've spent enough of your day. Again, if you've been behind the computer or you go into work, um, that's time you've given to somebody else or the organization that you're working for. But if you can't spend and focus 45 to 60 minutes on you for your workout to benefit your health and wellness and, and and your your mental and spiritual, whatever you look for in your exercise routine, then then something's off. Because if there's 24 hours in a day, you can't give one of those to yourself. Um, there there is something wrong. And I think Wendy, you you brought up a really good point to where if if you're efficient, and again, not everybody has the you know has has had the experience of working out with you or any any personal trainer certified with the National Academy of Sports Medicine that goes with the thought process of, okay, let's let's improve range of motion through self-myofascial technique. Let's look at a flexibility routine that works for me and the purpose of that workout. And then what's what are the three, four movements that I can string together that gives me the most bang for my buck for the time that I'm in here, right? Not everybody comes in with that, but I guess the, the big point is, is that if you are efficient, as far as movement wise, right? If I, if I, if I give myself some flexibility, because if I've been sitting down a lot, my, my hips might be gunked up a little bit. My shoulders might be a little stuck and I'm, my spine might be kind of fixed in that forward position. But if I open things up through flexibility, range of motion and, and turn on my core and my glutes, well, guess what? Your muscles are going to be more efficient. They are going to be, they're going to produce more force. They're going to reduce more force. Um, which means you're going to spend more calories. So from an efficiency standpoint, as far as spending more calories, if you can move better, you can lift more weights, you can, you can move faster, which means maybe more, you know, more steps on the treadmill, then you don't have to spend that much time because you're moving inefficiently and you have to do more work to spend, you know, more calories for your end goal. But if, like you said, Wendy, if you know the goal and you know how to make your body move better, you could do whatever you're going to do in the gym with much more intensity and, you know, speed and resistance. Well, you great bring up a great point about, you know, efficiency, because if I have a client and I used to train, you know, four or five people at the same time every 45 minutes. So as five people were coming off, five people were coming on. And this is obviously earlier in my career where we, I I was very, and I still am, pretty, I think, pretty good at, at multi, um, doing different things with different people, setting someone up, doing this, showing this exercise, coming back. The one thing I didn't do for them was to count. But what I found to be very helpful and very beneficial for the client are the combo exercises. And so some of the go-tos that you can maybe put into your workout if you're not already doing it and you know you're short on time or you want to shorten your amount of time in the gym, to your point, do some lateral two blocks, warm up those, you know, after you've stretched, of course. So, so do your rolling, do your stretching, do some lateral two blocks to kind of wake up the hips, do some bridges to, to wake up the glutes. Um, and then do things like a squat to row on a cable put both handles down, squat to row, a ball squat with a bicep curled overhead press. You've got quads, glutes, biceps, and shoulders all in that one exercise. A step up or a side step up. So you're working a different plane of motion. So a side step up to balance, and then you can throw in the curl to press if you didn't do that earlier on something else. Or you could do different um, movement patterns for your shoulders mm -hmm. or your, 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 um, your back. And the more creative you can be by doing multi movements, working multiple joints, the less time you have to spend doing just bicep curls, just overhead presses, just stuff for your legs. Do combos. It's going to also increase your heart rate. It's a lot harder. You're going to burn to your point. You're going to expend more calories, more expend, like the more that you burn your calories, as long as you don't go home and feed your face then you're going to see the weight loss that you want, the more, um, you know, the more tone look. That's that's what I hear. I want to look more tone. <laughs> if you want that, right, then right. stop doing this, do more combos, spend less time, you know, like just piddling around at the gym. Go in, right. get it done and leave. Yeah. Boom. Bing, bang, boom. Get bing, out of bang, there. Boom. Thanks for playing. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> let's talk about, you know, because, again, going back to that, that story I was telling about uh, telling you about with about my niece and her workouts. And, you know, I found myself going into the conversation of, you know, 
hormonal responses of, you know, what happens when you do train too much, you know, what, what happened again, that's, that's, that's a little over her head. I probably just kind of just said, you know, what, go grab a hot dog and let's go have some fun and, and let's, let's connect. But, <laughs> but the one thing that um, a lot of people don't realize, and we mentioned this at the, at the top of the recording was the fact that not only is it about wasting time or inefficiency, diminishing returns, but it's actually detrimental when you work out too long or, or too much over the week where, and I'm sure Wendy, you've, you've worked with um, some high level athletes who are in season and training and doing their conditioning with their strength coach and whatever exercises their athletic trainer has them do. Um, what, do what do you tell them about, okay, you know, we're doing too much. We need to focus on recovery because if we, if you keep going down the path that you're heading down, things are going to start to break down. Cortisol, again, it's a, catabolic hormone it's it's a stress hormone right we just mm -hmm. you, you you don't have to exercise to have cortisol right you don't sleep well you're stressed out you have cortisol but if you work out you overtrain you have cortisol so and that can actually start to take take away the benefit of movement and activity and that planned exercise but um how do how do you balance out you know someone who's definitely overtraining and get them to kind of back back off a little bit when it comes to to their workout plan? Well, it's definitely difficult, especially when you've got someone with the mindset that like to our point that we said er earlier, you know, more is better if I don't do this, you know, and, and it becomes almost addictive. Like I actually wrote a research or a, a, an article for a magazine about people that are addicted to exercise because they start to see these changes in their bodies when they first start. And then they start to not see those changes. So they think they have to spend more time doing it. But remember, and this is what I stress to my clients, our body starts to adapt to the things that we're doing every four to six weeks. Right. So if you're always biking, you're going to not burn as many calories biking after week four and five and six because you've been doing it and your body kind of gets accustomed to that. So it doesn't have to work as hard because it's used to it. However, if you have someone that's a biker and I put them in the pool and I have them swim different laps and do different types of strokes, or then I have them go for like a run because, you know, it's just something different. It's a lot harder. Their body's having to work harder. And so I tell people that it's not necessarily us training, um, you know, over and over, because again, when they do the same thing over and over, it's going to be repetitive movement that can lead to muscle imbalances that can lead to injury. So I stress that first and foremost, like let's challenge your body in different ways. Let's move in different ways you know, different patterns, like we walk and we live and things that you have to do. Let's reverse what you're doing, especially if it's an athlete on the court or on the field or whatever. So therefore we can work on the muscles that they're not using in their sport. And then also really making sure on the recovery side that they understand that too much training, to your point, if the cortisol levels stay up really, really high, the body can't recover because then it's actually just too much stress on it and your body's going to want to shut down. And so instead of allow, allowing yourself post-workout to, um, you know, kind of replenish what you did in order to, you know, get ready for the next day, it's going to be so fatigued that it's going to kind of shut down and not be able to recover as fast. So your workouts aren't going to be as good the next time around. And so one of those things, just if you notice that yourself, you know, you're getting really fatigued and that you start to lose the strength and the endurance and stuff that you once had, then maybe you should back off your workout, which sounds crazy as a trainer, stop working out and doing what you're doing, reevaluate your program and see what you can change and see if you notice a difference in how you feel and then how you move. Right. I don't know if I answered your question, but. <laughs> no, I mean, no, th those are all good things because I mean, it just feeds into what I've seen historically to where, you know, especially when you're working with a young guy in his early twenties and all they want to do is look good, right? They want the biceps, they want the shoulders, they want the big pecs and, and all that good stuff. But, you know, when they come up to me and they say, you know, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm not growing as much, or I, I saw these gains last year, but you know, it's been harder to get those gains. Well, you look at their workout routine. It's like, you're doing too many curls, you know, for, forget about the exercise selection. This is just, you know, you're doing too many curls, too many bench presses, you know, you're doing all these things that, you know, you mentioned that repetitive stress, you're, you're doing the same thing over and over again. You have a risk of overuse injuries, which in this story in my head, uh, you know, some years ago, that that's, that's exactly what was happening. But the other thing was, it's just, um, you know, they weren't sleeping well, 
right? They were doing too much, you know, sleep and fatigue and, you know, the amount of weight that they were lifting wasn't wasn't there, is actually going down. So when you look at everything, not just in the gym or in your, wherever you work out, but you have to consider other things in your life. You know, how, how, how is your sleep? Um, how is your appetite and how is your ability to, to rest and recover? Are you feeling achy in between workouts? So not just looking at the workouts themselves, but also looking at how you are the other parts of your day when you're not in the gym. Are you able to, to, to get a good night's sleep and, and, you know, be able to kind of identify other factors that are telling you this, like your body is tired, right? Your body needs to, you need some time off. And, you know, it's not uncommon for me to say, it's like, you know what, you need, you need a, a week, week and a half out of the gym, go outside, go in the park, do some kind of active recovery. But whatever you're doing, your body needs a break from it because it's just tearing down. And that's, again, one of the fears I had for my niece because she's doing the same circuit around the gym, right? When she was telling me the same circuit around the gym, the same piece of equipment for her cardio. So what, you know, so, so what I had to tell her is like, okay, we need to talk later, but two things we need to look at. Okay. Maybe different exercise selection and a different piece of cardio because you've adapted, you're not seeing the results. And like you said, Wendy, you're starting to chase the results that you saw earlier on, but the results aren't coming, right? So you're chasing a ghost from that standpoint. Well, and those of you guys that are just joining us, Ken Miller and myself, Wendy Batts, we're talking about tips to avoid overkill at the gym. And, you know, just it's really looking at time spent in the gym. And to your point, Ken, you, you know, the social aspect is huge. And, you know, being able to be a part of like a community. I know some people join gyms to they can you know be part of a community. They do workouts together. They do um, group training. And I think all of that is fantastic because you need that motivation and you need the accountability. So I do think that, you know, if you're going to an hour class here and there, I think there is so much positive benefit that you're going to be able to get out of that. However, I, I think that the, the key takeaways I'm hoping that Ken and I are trying to express is that if you work out three to five times a week, you know, you spend anywhere from 30 minutes to, you know, an hour in the gym, depending on not, not necessarily five days a week, five, you know, an hour a piece. But I mean, you know, just be smart in your programming, manage your rest periods, think about your rep count, like and your rep count should be based on your goals and the way your body's going to adapt to certain things. So if I want to get bigger, of course, nutrition is going to be a huge part of that. So that's going to be very key. But I'm also going to do less reps at a very, very higher weight, which would I need those rest periods in between. So when we talk about rest periods, it's important that you give your, your body a chance to recover so you can maximize your lift for set number two. But if you're looking for just general health, you want some, you know, maybe weight loss, it may be 12 to, to, to um, 20 reps, usually between 12 and 15. If, if you're going to go from one exercise to another, limit your rest periods and maybe throw in what we've called like a metabolic blast. So 30 seconds on a bike or something like, you know, a 30 second sprint on the treadmill or, you know, something like that, you know, mountain climb or whatever, and then repeat it. So therefore, you know, you, again, you have a purpose and you're going to receive a specific goal because your body will adapt to that type of training. And I think, you know, managing your time, looking at your program and really being smart about what you're doing at the gym, you're going to see so many more rewards and you can actually put the time in your calendar to get it done. Right. And something that I, I tell my clients that, you know, I don't have too many clients that are, are guilty of overtraining, but, you know, watching the clock, right? You know, watch the clock, you know, whether that's on your wrist or on the wall, but, you know, hey, set a goal for yourself to be out of there. And I, and I have to do the same thing for myself. It's like, okay, I have to be out of there. So I have to be done, get everything done. And I'm a pretty task oriented guy. So if I have that deadline and I know what I have to get done, then I'm going to I'm not going to diddle daddle and, and waste time going from one exercise. Diddle daddle. Diddle daddle. Wow. That diddle, must be daddle. a California thing. <laughs> I'm not going to waste time. Let me just <laughs> diddle daddle around at the gym. But, um, but I think yeah. too, uh, it's important to mention that we talk about, why don't you tell us a little bit about maybe splitting it up? If you don't have 30 minutes to an hour at the gym, does that mean you shouldn't go? 
Uh, no, stay home. Yeah, you got Netflix, just <laughs> HBO Max, whatever. Just sit, you know, forget it. I, I can't get it in there. Um, no, split it up. You know, you could have like you, you're kind of mentioning Wendy. You know, you, you know your a, a cardio routine or a circuit based routine. You can you can do a more of a circuit based routine. You can change up. Um, you know, cardio one day, resistance training another day. You can you know just body parts, right? As as much as we hate to say body part training, you know back biceps, chest triceps type of deal, but you can go upper body one day, lower body another day. So if you, if you have to do a certain amount of volume uh, for a certain motion or a certain area of your body, yeah, you know, you don't have to do it all in one day and take two hours doing it. You can have a lower body day uh, or an upper body day or another way of putting it is another a push day or a pull day, you know, a front side and a back side day. So that way you can parcel out certain movement patterns and and see that it gets its due attention with the intensity that you want it to have. Like like you said, you have your list, you have it's organized and it's set and ready to go. But if you have this emotional attachment to certain exercises or certain volume of work, yeah, keep it. Just do one one day and do uh, another set the other day. So you can you it doesn't have to be. Uh, about turning your world upside down. It could be about just taking what you've got and just kind of reorganizing a little bit. So if you do identify that you've been overtraining or you are spending too much time in the gym and realize the fact that more is not better, then take what you've got, take what you're doing and just kind of split it up and make sure that you get the intensity, you get the volume, but it's not all in one session now we can kind of spread it out during the week and you know old school way of doing that is you know what's monday night in 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 gyms across the country national it's, chest day it's national chest day <laughs> all day. don't do chest on mondays yeah. and if you did it on tuesdays it's ghost town i think we that, mentioned that, that before <laughs> that's right that's right so if you have your pushing day on monday you have your pulling day on on tuesday and then you have your lower body day on on wednesday and then you know you know, lather, rinse, repeat, and then there's your six days a week. Yes. And to your point, breaking it up on different days is is very important. But even if you broke stuff up throughout the day and, you know, there's still a lot of very, very positive benefit and research that's out there that says if you have 15 minutes in between like a meeting or something and you did something that even at home, not even we're not even saying you have to be at the gym, but just time spending working out. If you do 15 minutes at one point and then you had to go do something else and then you came back and did maybe 15 or 20 minutes of something else that's better than nothing at all and so you've really got to manage your schedule and and even if it's quote accidental exercise a little bit of something is better than nothing and you know just little little things here and there can make a significant impact and difference on how you look how you feel how you how you live and i think you know, just just being smart in your programming. I, I know I've said that so many times. I'm kind of a broken record, so I'll I'll stop right. that. But I think that's my that is my my key takeaway. Just be smart in your programming. Yeah, just if 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 you know, it's it's again, you know, we're talking about avoiding gym overkill, but it is about smarter and not harder. And mm -hmm. you know, no reason why workouts have to be any different. So. Take what you've got. If you're one of those that are guilty of what we're talking about, hopefully you've pulled away a couple points at least and knowing that, you know, it's not just about diminishing returns. It is it is about overtraining and all the detrimental effects to the body when you do overtrain. So hopefully we helped out. I, I pulled out a lot of great nuggets from you here, Wendy. So <laughs> thank you as always. Uh, my pleasure. You know, I, I, today I was very stern. I, it's, I, I'm very <laughs> passionate about this. I want you guys to, to go to the gym and be smart. <laughs> yeah, be smart. I mean, yeah, you can you can go to the gym and then socialize after. So yes. if that's if that's your MO, then kind of got to because you got to remember if you're at the gym and you're chatting it up with somebody else, you're taken away from their workout, too. So yes. you got to be be kind and rewind. Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks again, Wendy, for everything. Um, and for you listeners out there, we appreciate you. As always, I want to say that if you like what you're listening to uh, with our with our podcast, please like, follow, subscribe and comment. Let us know if there's anything more that you'd love to hear from us, because we would love to deliver information that definitely helps you out in your journey of wellness and fitness and strength and whatever it is that you're going for when you're when you're working out. So until next time, everybody. Take care and be well.